Everybody, thanks for checking out the Chris Gethard Show podcast. It's really um, cool that you're checking this out. We're about to do, I think, the dumbest show we've done in years. His life would be trashed! Hey, you better believe I'm trashed. <laughs> we are uh, scrappy trash people. What's the point of this show? I just turned it on. We've always been with we've this show. We've always been trash people. We will always be trash people. It's true. This doesn't feel real. Live from my grandmother's basement, we are the Virgils to your Dante, showing you the highlights of all seven levels of Chris Gethard's personal cable access hell. Welcome to the Trash People podcast, the podcast where we review public access episodes of the Chris Gethard show so that you know which ones you want to watch. I'm Emily Pineapple. I'm Forrest, the keeper of the canon. And I'm Judge Robin. And we hope to bring you a delightful Chris Gethard show-esque experience. Today we are going to be discussing episode one, the first episode, which was released on June 22nd, 2011. The musical guest was Mikey Erg. And the panel was, of course, Chris Gethard, Don Finelli, John uh, Gremberling, Diana Kolsky, uh, who is Murph's. If you're listening to this podcast, I'm sure you have seen other episodes of the Chris Gethard show. Murph's uh, lover, uh, George uh, Caraman, Jesse Lee, Anthony Autonomic. Auto- I'm not saying that right, Forrest. Correct me. I think it's Autonomic. Atomic, Anthony Atomic, Bethany Hall, the Human Fish, and Fran Gillespie. 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 Fran Gillespie. I apologize to everyone for terribly mispronouncing also, all of your names. It's John Kimberling. John Kimberling. Thank you. Thank you very and much. Thank you both for not l- having me read all the names. <laughs> <laughs> that looked like a lot of work. <laughs> That was way, way more work than I expected at this, the top of the podcast. That's why we make the big podcast bucks. <laughs> so before we get into it, I wanted to take a moment to ask a question to my fellow co-hosts uh, that will hopefully help you, the listeners, get to know us, the people who you will be listening to a little better, uh, both physically and uh, mentally, strategically. So my question is, if you fellow co-host Robin and Forrest were to fight the two other co-hosts one after the other Uh, they can't do team up fights how would you take them down let's start with you Forrest keeper of the canon all right so I mean I think that the big Don Finelli fan had the right idea I would immediately just go for your legs just try to take you down that's it I'm not I'm not playing games either of you both of you I think both of you would have leg vulnerability yeah well, see, you're taller than both of us. Sure. So getting to our legs is a little more of a journey for you. Do you think that within that time period of you getting down to our legs, maintaining your center of balance, which, of course, is much higher from the ground, that we would not be able to, like, punch you in the balls or something? I believe in myself, and I think if you believe in yourself, you can do anything you set your mind to. Okay. Joke's on, joke's on you, dude. I, I bike all the time. I've got calves of steel. Oh, no. <laughs> I regret my choice already. <laughs> Robin, how would you take us down? All right. So Forrest, I would definitely, uh, I'd shave his beard because that's where his powers come from. This is true. How dare you? Emily, uh, I think if I just stood really still for a while, you would just end up injuring yourself. (laughs) (laughs) That's a pretty good strategy. That is a pretty good strategy. Um, If I were to fight the two of you, so, Robin, I would uh, attempt to bamboozle you by removing my glasses. And because we are of similar height and build and have the exact same haircut, uh, you would be bamboozled into thinking you were looking in a mirror. And then in that moment of bamboozlement, I would punch you in the face. Um, and you would, no. you would be shocked from that. I think that would take you down. The old Don Finelli special. Uh, and then... Well, I, I think, too, that would be good because in that moment where I mistook you for myself, I'd be incredibly attracted to you and not see the punch <laughs> coming. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And Forrest, you are much larger than me. Yes. And and Robin. I'm not, not exceptionally larger, but larger. Um, so I don't know that I could physically overcome you without trickery as well. I would tickle you. 
I would oh. just tickle the fuck out of you and you would be incapacitated. That is you, a true fact. Yeah. You're especially, especially ticklish. I thought that or get like in a, like a Twitter beef with him about Star Wars. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that would definitely. I thought you were just going to mentally break me and like insist that they should bring back legends or something. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so we also have a sound piece for every time Forrest references Star Wars. Forrest, I'm going to ask you to do that now. I have you now. Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> And now that you have learned everything that you need to know about us, listeners, we're going to talk about the Chris Gethard Show, the thing you actually clicked on this damn podcast for. So if you are to watch this first episode of uh, the Chris Gethard Show on YouTube, it starts with Chris sitting on a couch in front of some uh, paint swatches um, that are on the wall, like just talking about the episode, you know, explaining what you're about to watch. Fair enough. Um, But yeah, he, he explains that. It started as a live show uh, at UCB Chelsea, and uh, Keeper of the Cannon Forest. Do you wanna do you wanna run down that little bit of history for us? That little bit of pre-show history that he shares that seems up your Cannon Alley. Oh, I would be happy to. Uh, so yeah, so it started out as a stage show at UCB Chelsea, and then after two years, they ended the live show and took it to public access. But not all of the fan base who went to go see it at UCB went along with them. One of the highlights of the live show was Diddy appeared on it, which was the origin of the Diddy door during the cable days. They just sort of went on Twitter and got Diddy to come down and make make an appearance on the show. On the stage show? On the stage show. This wasn't recorded at all. None of them knew Diddy. None of them knew. No, none of them knew Diddy. Oh, shit. There wasn't. He just, I think, tweeted something about how he was looking for something to do that night. And they're like, come on. And he did. Oh, shit. Um, which gave it this... Diddy did. Diddy did. Diddy did. But it gave it this extra aura of legend because there was no proof <laughs> that it had ever happened. <laughs> and then after the end of the stage show, Chris, J.D. Amato, the director of the show, Noah Foreman and Drew Johnston, who are the head writers, George Caraman, who we see on this episode with Jesse Lee as well, they all came and sort of masterminded this first episode which they conceived of as being a bit of a three-ring circus, and it delivered. Yeah, yeah. So he was hoping that, I think, the stage show was much more like a variety show than the later Chris Gethard show ended up being. That's what it sounded like. It sounded like this was sort of the best view we have of what the stage show was like. Oh, we also learned that the crew did not know how to run the cameras. Right. They were all just m and people because the crew was not certified in running a camera for public access yeah so it's pretty fun i hope that in this our first episode we do not have the same uh technical mishaps that they do here's hoping here's hoping (laughs) here's hoping yeah so we start the stage show uh chris comes out with bethany next to him which i thought was really interesting and she's holding a clipboard and he says that she's his assistant so i think that that must have been like like it was him and bethany in the stage show do you think i think so i mean that extra that extra level of like artifice i think of like and here we are ready to get the show started felt very like vaudeville stage showy to me yeah and uh judge robin do you want to share with us the chris gethard show guarantee that chris gethard guarantees us at the top of the show which which honestly holds true for most episodes which if it's not funny it'll be such a high level of disaster that the failure will be more entertaining than the show would be a success i like that i appreciate that I hope yeah. I hope the same for all of my endeavors, don't y'all? Mm-hmm. We also, at the um, basically immediately at the top of the show, we check in with the human fish, who has human fish written on his stomach in, in sh- Sharpie something black marker. Hopefully water washable. Although then when he returns to the sea, it'll wash off and no one will know who he is. I like to think of it as foreshadowing all of Chris's Sharpied shirts. <laughs> <laughs> The first one was uh, chips versus nachos and chips won, which honestly makes me think that like maybe on the stage show, the human fish was like supposed to pick the unpopular opinion unless any of you would pick chips over nachos. And um, why? Like nachos are just chips with better on them. Yeah. Yeah. They're just chips 2.0. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, Chris asks for the call in topic of the night. His call in topic of the night foreshadowed by 
our first question on this show. It's caller. If you were to fight me, Chris Gethard, how would you do it? Um, does he immediately ask Bethany? And Bethany's no, like, he doesn't ask Bethany till later. Okay. Also, I don't think a single caller ever answers this question. One, at least one did, because there was the caller who said they would take him down by the legs. <laughs> <laughs> Bethany's sure she could just take him down. I also like looking at him. I'd be like, yeah, I would just tackle you like from the middle, and you would go down like just snap. But he does like judo, right? Yeah, Jujitsu. Jujitsu. Like, he, he he could fights. probably fight us. You could take him down like you could take him down emotionally really easily. <laughs> I mean, having seen him and Banana Man both do martial arts, I, th- I would I, th- I would bet on Chris over a lot of people. Like he has the like the the chutzpah to like get in the ring with like actual professional MMA people. Yeah, and like learn this thing. We had then we had the first caller, uh, the very first caller of the Cable Access Chris Gethard Show, Robin Forrest. Who wants to Who wants to talk about it? Whoever talks first. And then is, like, the other one, whoever backs down from that, whoever's like, oh, I should defer to you talking, they should be the one to talk. I mean, this is, like, a historic moment, so it feels sort of up my alley a little bit. Okay, that's fair. Uh, Just kill my bit of, like, people messing up talking over each other. Well, so this is a historic moment. But I mean, like, you know. It's the first one that... (laughs) Are you happy, Emily? All right, four. There we go. Okay. So... The first caller just wanted the LLC to play a Slayer song, <laughs> and they do, and it's so just, it's awkward, it's self-deprecating, <laughs> it's it's perfect. It really sets this ship a, a sea perfectly. It's beautiful. beautiful Chris didn't, didn't love the call, but I did. Uh, Chris then introduced a bit that was going to be happening, you know, along with many other bits on the stage show. Um, he introduces... George and Jesse, who are going to be uh, going through a trash hunt later in the episode. Judge Robin, do you want to tell us about the trash hunt? Yeah, it wasn't a, I don't think it was a great bit, but uh, they're basically they're rummaging through Trish's, uh, Chris's trash trying to find a dollar. Um, they have some like trash talking at the beginning to each other, which is kind of funny because George, oh, George instantly starts saying some racist stuff and Jesse <laughs> just says something really wholesome. And it, oh no, it was just like, <laughs> Jesse, so Jesse's Asian, if you don't know. And he says he feels confident because Asian people know how to find money in garbage, which got a lot of cheers from the audience, you know, uh, an affirming thing for a person to say about themselves. Yeah, and then George just, what does he say? He says something about karate chopping him. It was, he karate it was just kind of awkward. glasses? Like, what is that? It, I don't know, but it was racist and kind of awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Chris, of course, calls it out as being racist and kind of awkward. Um, well, at first, he, he calls out his first comment as vaguely racist, and then his second comment as outwardly racist, yeah. which makes me think he's like, oh, they're reacting to this bit I'm doing. And it's like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Poor George. You could almost feel his like shame for the rest of the episode, like trying to figure out what to do with it. When I liked that Chris sort of like was generous enough to offer him the like, I feel like you got yourself in a bit that you don't really <laughs> like, but you don't know how to get out. <laughs> oh, and Jesse like completely put him there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, Jesse yeah. doubled down on it. Oh hard. yeah. Jesse just like fucking drilled it. It was great. Um. So then we go to the second element of the stage show that's going to be going on. We have Don Finelli, who is the only guest with a theme song. Um, he's actually a member of the UCB's Fuck That Shit with Drew Johnson. You can find that also on YouTube. And then, yeah, so Don was tasked with building a human-sized birdhouse from the inside out. And he'll be tasked with that very same task again close to the end of the show's run because Chris regretted how this episode went and wanted to give Don a chance to do it with actual tools. The other part of this bit was that um, during Don's entire doing of that, Fran, uh, who was on the show, is going to be translating everything he says into Spanish so that like every th- he has like this echo constantly. But in Spanish, he almost immediately is just like, fuck you, man, to Chris Gethard. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was great. 
And he has to use tiny nails. Tiny, tiny nails. nails. And he's like hammering throughout the entire show and being really distracting. Yeah. Oh, which yeah. is why Chris is yelling at him. Yeah, like he hammers during Mikey Erg's set, which Chris gets real mad about. Oh god. He's so mean. He's so mean. Like so he Chris always talks about how he was too mean in this episode and how it like works on stage, but like really doesn't work like on TV. And I was like, Oh, how mean could Chris Gethard get? And then like watching this, I was like very shocked with how with how mean he was. Yeah, it was it was like it started out playful and got really mean really quickly. Yeah, he's just like such a sweet sweetheart through <laughs> so much of the show that seeing him when he's just like, my character's mean. It's like, yeah. oh, you're good. You yeah. were very good at this. He said, uh, he actually said at the top of the show that afterwards he, he really did have a, there was a terse conversation between him and Don. So I think Don was definitely like, you were way too fucking mean. Because he was. He I mean, was very yeah, mean. It's a good note. It's a he good was note. He very mean. He was very mean. Then we get, um, it was our third caller that asks the quintessential question of the show. What is the point of this show? Chris, Chris doesn't know either. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was the entire contents of the call. We then went on to the next sketch, Anthony and John. Anthony, do you remember the last names of these people? I read them a million Years ago, it feels like it's Anthony Atominic, who would go on to play Trump in the President Show on Comedy Central. Wait, that's the guy who plays Trump on the President Show. Yeah, which Ooh, is also man, directed he, uh... by JD Amato of oh, the Chris Gethard oh. Show. I didn't yeah. realize they were on Comedy Central. Yeah, and then John he looked Gemberling. a lot different. He looked a lot different in this episode. Oh yeah, I mean, without all the the mountains of makeup, uh, and then John was Bevers on Broad City. Oh, Mm -hmm. wow. So they both made it big on Comedy Central specifically. (laughs) Hmm. Uh, So they they made it, maybe not made it big. You know, I mean, when you're a comedian. Look, they have one more show on Comedy Central than I have, so. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So the bit there was that uh, Anthony Atominic is a cook. He's cooking John things from scratch. Um, and John will taste them and then comment on them uh, with the idea being that Anthony is this really great cook um, and he describes the things that he has cooked in great detail. They sounded really excellent. They were very complicated, like kale with lemon rinds and truffle salt. and The cheese puff is what really stood out to me as sounding delicious. What, were, what was the judgment that, that John had on that, Judge Robin? everything was too salty just a little too salty everything was too salty just a little bit but just a little bit just a little too salty yeah. just a little too salty which of course pissed anthony off great sketch enjoyed that one uh oh and then we get the fourth caller terrence who wants to talk about terrence terrence was interesting uh terrence so terrence in 2011 <laughs> called in to say that america well, he said he didn't say America specifically, but probably America is what he meant is the quote most pussed out society of all time. And then, of course, Forrest, you added the note definitely well, voted for Trump. Yeah, I did add that because he said Ron Paul's kind of cool, but then started going on about how he wants a candidate who comes out of left field and draws on Hammurabi's code. <laughs> and, oh, man, that aged that aged poorly. Oh, yeah. But what I loved about it is Anthony really digs into this call oh yeah and is like i'm i feel you man i'm feeling you and it's like yeah yeah no wonder you're so good at trump when you just like (laughs) you had the raw like material right there what's great is like anthony gives the example the same example that came to my mind when i thought of hammurabi's code there's of course eye for eye but then like the other one is if you build a house and that house collapses and kills that person or that person's kids then your kids get killed and I'm like, that's a random one for both of us to know. Like, that has to be the example that's in all of the, like, 11th grade history books, right? Is that the I example mean, that came to either of your minds? I didn't pay attention in school. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about the, if you steal, you get your hand cut off. Ah. Example. Ah. So it's just me and Anthony Atominic who are both like extremely clever and going to make it on Comedy Central, correct? Yes, you and your deep cut of yep. Hammurabi's, Hammurabi's code. code. We get a Mike York performance where Chris like screams at at Don 
for nailing during it uh, and took away his nails. He had to do tape from that point on. <laughs> he had to tape together a human-sized birdhouse. And we then had a, a staple of the Chris Gethard show for a number of the public access episodes, The Lone Cornmeal Machine, which is an animation uh, that was taken by animators. What what is what is her name? Connor Ratliff. Yeah. It and doesn't matter. Let me let me do my rant. I'm doing my rant about the Lone Coral Meal Machine. So when we <laughs> first started watching this, right, we started at like episode eight. So I knew the Lone Coral Meal Machine is just the kind of random videos. And then, you know, we, we went back and watched this episode. And this has like permanently scarred me for because, OK, if you, if you don't know, like just skip over this. As soon as Lone Coral Meal comes up, just like skip ahead because they show surgery of testicular torsion in this. And you really can't tell that it's a testicle. You can tell it's a testicle. I, mean... I spent a lot of time looking at testicles. You can tell <laughs> it's a testicle. It's really cool it's, animation. It's, I know. It's it. disgusting. It don't, is disgusting. Don't badmouth Connor Ratliff and 2018 Kickstarter creator in residence, Mael Dolivu. I apologize. Friend, I can't do French names very well, but Mael Dolivu. <laughs> Well, at least we made sure to credit the woman on the team of two in addition to Connor Ratliff, who we know very well. I'm right. going to give us non-existent gold stars for not being shitheads. She's also an illustrator. Yeah. She does a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. In really addition cool stuff. to everything, to the Chris Gethard show stuff. Oh, and then we get to what Bethany's strategy for taking down Chris was, which is uh, kicking him in the knees and then punching him in the balls. Solid. Which would... Be about, like, my strategy as well. She's sure she would defeat him, but Chris thinks he'd win with the confidence of someone who does jujitsu. Also uh, with the confidence of someone who is a former professional wrestler. Oh, really? He had already done that by this point? Yeah, yeah. I think his time as a professional wrestler was way before all of the Chris Gethard show stuff. That's excellent. Um, we have another fun, like questioning of the racist character that that George has created with Jesse as we ramp up to trash hunt it's a slow uh, ramp up Chris just keeps like checking in with them and they just have more and more shit on to protect themselves oh and then we get Terrence back Terrence calls back Terrence calls back and just he really wants to play one mega death song (laughs) to prove to Chris that it really should be the basis for all American policy decisions. And then he plays it sort of like you can't really hear it because the microphone was really bad. So you just sort of hear heavy metal noise off mic. And then as he gets hung up on, he says he wants Dave Mustaine to be president. (laughs) Um, Dave Mustaine is, of course, the guitarist, singer, songwriter, and member of both Megadeth and Metallica. Okay. Uh, we then get back to Anthony Autonomic uh, and John Gemberling. Be- Gemberling, Bevers from Broad City. We're just going to put last names in the notes next time because it sounds more professional, right? Listeners, if anyone's listening. Yeah, it's nice to give him a shout out. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. We're being nice. I agree. Being Host so on nice. show who has not used last name this whole time. <laughs> I've used my last name. Pineapple. Yeah. I'm oh, that's true. Pineapple. You did give your last name. I'm sorry. I didn't. No. I thought I, your I, last thought... name Or is Keeper, Keeper of, of the, the Canon camp. both my title? It's, my, it's both my title and my last yeah. name, I suppose. I think of it as my mission in life, but... And Robin is Judge Robin's last name. Right. No, I'm like Madonna. I just, I'm just Judge Robin. That's my first name. Oh, I thought you oh, were... Oh, okay. I thought you were like Judge Reinhold. <laughs> or, um... <laughs> And then, yeah, and then we check in with uh, Anthony and, and John, yeah, and they have some more appetizers. Judge Robin, tell us about some of the judgments that flew during that. You know what? That that, this entire segment kind of fell flat. I'm, yeah. Let's just skip over it. You feel like it? Yeah. Yeah, they just kind of fight about Anthony being late. Um, it's pretty cute. Pretty cute. Just a little too salty. If you're interested, go watch it. Well, like, it doesn't, eh. doesn't Don also interrupt this segment, like, right when they're... The, no, Bethany does, I think. Or somehow the segment gets interrupted right as they're getting a rhythm going. It's probably Don, because the next note is that he would fight Chris by punching him in the face. <laughs> 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 Which is the, the fighting style of a person who feels personally wronged. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> next caller, again, a big Don Finelli fan. Um, does anyone want to talk about this fun call? 
I'll talk that. I like this yeah. one. That's my favorite call. Just because he asks Don Finelli to take off his shirt, which he immediately does. And I feel like I have friends who I know who would definitely do that. Or just like <laughs> walking around waiting for someone to ask them to take off their shirt. <laughs> I'm not naming any names because you know who I'm talking about. But yeah, like I feel like everyone knows that guy who would gladly take off his shirt the moment he was asked. Yeah, and I think it was uh, I think it was someone Chris knew that was calling also. They didn't really say who. Yeah, Chris was like, I feel like you're someone I know using a weird voice. And the caller was like, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, we then check in with uh, Diana. Diana, last name. Kolsky. Kolsky. Diana Kolsky. Who was, who shows was painting off... Omar's face, which I think we failed to mention earlier. Yeah. <laughs> that was another element of the stage show. She would be painting Omar's face. Um, based on his his last dream and he he actually was not able to produce a dream that he remembered but that was all she needed all she needed was I've, that moment listening to him i've never seen someone go, get like so much like testing anxiety from like such a simple question right <laughs> poor omar and then we did the trash hunt the trash hunt happened they hunted in trash no one found the dollar because it was very difficult. Does anyone have anything to say about the trash hunt? If it was fun or not? I think like Chris even says like this did not go as, as well as I hoped it would. Oh, no, it, it went terribly. Well, I think because one of them was standing on the dollar the entire yeah. time. Yeah, Jesse was on the dollar the whole game pretty much. Um, and it's just sort of hard to see. Like we couldn't really see what the trash was and, and stuff. So it might have been better like in the audience. Maybe I mean I I don't know I think it was it was pretty normal trash like I don't think they were, like they didn't they didn't like ri- like you know game it and put in like weird trash That's for true. them to search through it really was just his kitchen trash like Thai food um, I I think they were kind of hoping that like the dollar would be right on top and they both just like jump on it and push each other around and it would be yeah. dirty and whatnot yeah I think it'd they be like were... a fight in the trash yeah because yeah. they made it clear that they wanted the winner to be whoever lifts it over their head mm-hmm. right not just whoever gets it first because jesse was like maybe it's whoever gets it and it's like no i think it was jesse one of them yeah. was like whoever gets it should win and chris was like no you have to hold it over your head so they were definitely like, hoping a scuffle would break out like i think it was one of those things where you're like you know you have ladies wrestling in mud and that's <laughs> sexy and they're like okay what's the least sexy thing we could do so dudes wrestling in trash yeah i can see that <laughs> Dudes. I'm not to not to kink shame anyone, <laughs> <laughs> especially not on this show. Um, and then uh, that's that's the end of the show. Uh, Geth and Bethany close it, and it really it feels really really different from every other episode of the Chris Gethard show. Yeah, you can see that. Like some of the core DNA of what will go on to be the Chris Gethard show is definitely there from the beginning, but it feels very distinct, even from episode two. Yeah, definitely different from episode two, um, which is something he talks about. Yeah, Chris says the show is a caterpillar. It gets better as it goes, which I agree with after having like binged a bunch of episodes to decide which ones we're going to review. So you don't have to. Yeah, so you don't have to. Exactly. This I, is my service to you, the listener. I do love that right out of the gate, the show ends too early. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is also true. It ends too early and Chris gets to chew out Noah and Drew and JD. He brings them on stage so we get to like really see who like Drew Johnson and Don Finelli is. Drew Johnson is also on Fuck That Shit, the improv group that you can watch on YouTube. They're very fun. It's really good improv. It's, it's, it's really fun, fun to watch. And yeah, that's basically the call. So it's time to go into our personal sections of uh, observations that we are each going to bring you, the listeners. I guess we'll start with my section, MVNPC. That's all you need to know. Which is not the sound drop for my section. My section, MVNPC. I love you. Thank you very much. (laughs) Um, where I, I share. Hold on, wait, wait, real quickly. I feel like this is very on theme, like like screwing up technical bits. <laughs> no, you dragged all the sound clips over a key right before the show recorded. You did that, not me. Nope. 
no, we weren't supposed to record two days ago, but we weren't able to get our audio set up working because random chords kept breaking. Don't blame me. Blame Guitar Center, <laughs> who also gave me a chord that's working great. So don't really blame them either. Um, But yeah, MVNPC. I love you! Excellent, where I share my favorite audience member of today's episode. Uh, today, it appears the audience, they were all sitting in chairs in rows. More like a stage show. That is not the case in future episodes. But the only member of the audience I really saw were, was Omar, who uh, offered to get his face painted. And yeah, go Omar, being there from the beginning. He was very game for being called up to get his face painted. Yeah. By Chris, being like, who volunteers? Omar? Yeah, <laughs> basically. It was a little bit of a call out. <laughs> and I like, just thank you for volunteering. <laughs> I did air quotes. And then next we have. That's all you need to know. That canonical corner over there where canon happens. That's all you need to know. Just killing it. Killing it with the sound bites. Killing it. Where Forrest shares any trivia, Easter eggs, or super fan observations that he has about this episode. So my first one is the fact that this week's musical guest, Mikey Erg, would go on to become the drummer for the LLC all through the cable run. And then this is also the first time shade is thrown at Ger Stevens. Mm, True. And so that's a pretty big moment. Ger Stevens, in case you don't know, is the person who has the studio before the Chris Gethard show and yelled at them to get out one of the times where they needed to leave. He will reference. He'll be back. Um, And then the Diana Kolsky... In addition to accepting Murph's marriage proposal on a later episode of the Chris Gethard show, also designed the art for Gethard's albums and the official beautiful anonymous pin. Oh, well, the career suicide one. Yeah, the career suicide one, the Maya comedy album that he did before that. And then that pin, it's just him with a phone. Those are all really awesome. Yeah, they're really good. Um, And then I have one more, which is a little bit of a, a theory. Oh, or a question that I have. Is this George Random George, who appears later on in a morph suit? What is this George's last name? Caraman? Caraman? Yeah. Yeah. Is this George Random George? Is it Random George Caraman? Look, all I'm saying is I haven't seen the two in the room at the same time. True facts. And that brings us to our our final section. We're at the final section of our first episode of this Chris Gethard show based podcast Judge Robin we're gonna go to Judge Robin's scorecard all rise and and be seated all right so I'm Judge Robin at the end of every episode I'm going to uh give my official judgment on how everyone did Uh, let me pull up my scorecard one second all right so Chris got one point this episode uh, you know what? I watched this a while ago, and all I wrote is, you're going to come too hard. I think he was talking <laughs> about face painting and, like, misspoke and said, I think he meant to say you're going to enjoy it hard or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, Jesse Lee has one point for saying that he was he had a, a really reasonable things he was going to do with the dollar. The other guy said something really bizarre, and Jesse's just like, I'm going to buy some gum, which is about all you can do with uh, a dollar. I have another point I gave to Chris, and once again, didn't write a note about this, but was the <laughs> quote, I'm sure you'll ejaculate in no time. <laughs> uh, Don finally got two points this episode, uh, one for taking off his shirt and another for taking abuse. <laughs> and then in first place, the best person in this entire show, uh, the Spanish translator with 20 yes. points. 28 points? 28 points, yeah. Wow. She was, I mean, yeah, no, Fran was great. She really, she kept up with Don perfectly. It was impressive. Judge Robin, if yeah. you were to give advice to the audience of Chris Gethard fans, uh, some of which you may not have seen any of the public access shows, would you judge this first episode as one that they should watch themselves? Uh, maybe after watching some other ones. Yeah. Don't start with this one. You know, the the bits are awkward. Uh, the thing's not fully put together. I'd say, you know, maybe maybe you get into the show first and then you'll appreciate what this one is. I would agree with that. If you're interested in seeing the show develop, it's it's fun, but 
it's not as strong as it gets, you know, a hundred something episodes later. Or um, even ex- 30, ex- Excuse honestly. me. Excuse True. me. Are, are you, are you Judge Forrest? <laughs> I, I was. Not just con- you. I was concurring with your argument. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, thank you all for listening. I am going to be ending the show. We are going to be ending the show every time, hopefully, bringing you an awesome band that you should all check out in the spirit of the Chris Gethard Show. So today, I am playing us out over Mayeth. Mayeth, an awesome band that uh, just disbanded but they have a couple of albums that you can check out this is eulogy eulogy off of their 2013 album oceans to ashes you can find all of their stuff on spotify i want to thank you all for listening i hope that we have brought you a good podcast we're just hoping to maybe you know give back to a community that we love and highlight some artists that we love and make something good I don't know if you want to email us you can reach us at we are trash people at gmail.com yay podcast this song goes on for another five minutes or so so if you want to bail we're going to stop talking very shortly but this is a good song so Enjoy! Mayeth, M A E T H. Mayeth. Are we, are, we, are we done? Now we're done. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay. Here we go. Okay, nailed it, man. At the end, you're like angry at the <laughs> Who camera. Cares, man? I think that's funny.
Hello? Yeah, caller, what's up? Talk fast, 10 seconds. Five seconds. Oh, stern rules, Baba Booey, Baba Booey. Baba Booey, you nailed it. We'll see you next week.